All right, Yamato versus Hiromu. Let's talk about it. Yeah, uh, this is like the match where I just like it could be anything from being just a bad matchup with a lot of like Yamato's just worst traits, or it could be have the opportunity to be pretty special. This is the one match on the show that I think has that level of variability with it. Interesting. I hadn't really considered the idea of this being a bad match just because it's a bad match. And and part of that is maybe, you know, I watched the All-Star Junior Festival. I, did you ever get around to watching that show? I watched that morning of. I was... <laughs> you, you woke, woke, up question, like, woke up like a child on Christmas. <laughs> don't question my respect and honoring of the Lek Corporation in my household. I really liked the chemistry that Yamato and Hiromu had in that match. I was a big proponent for a few years there of Hiromu's washed. He's not the same guy. He doesn't know how to adapt. And then 2023 rolled around, and Hiromu has kicked my ass this year. He's been incredible. He's adapted to post-broken neck in-ring style. And Yamato has had a very good year. You know, I've enjoyed Yamato this year because he's been so out of the spotlight. This is... You know, much in the same way that it's Doi's biggest match of the year, this is Yamato's biggest match of the year, and I expect him to be there for it. I expect him to show up. I expect this to be great. My big fear is that we end up with a double DQ, Hyo and Kai run in, and we do Hyo and Kai versus Yamato and Hiromu, and you have to be prepared for that. I'm not defending it. I'm not saying I like it. You have to be prepared for that. Yeah, because it's it's a scenario where there's no way that Hiromu, outside of like something awful happening, losing any match he's a part of on this show. There's just no rationale. And if you're Dragon Gate, yeah, you're bringing in this star from a much bigger company, but you really don't want your motto to lose to an outsider. So the uh, no contest restart, uh, baby face beat uh, Z Bratz, I think. It, it, it's something that as soon as that thought got put in my head, I was not able to escape it, Case. Okay, well, let me throw two scenarios at you here. One, Yamato wins. Let, let's say by Frankensteiner. Let's really give Hiromu with the benefit of the doubt. Yamato wins via Frankensteiner. Destruction in Kobe this year. Yamato versus Hiromu. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Yamato loses. If you're Dragon Gate... Do you want the the figurehead of their company still, even with Kakuta cutting the promo, doing all this, that, Yamato's still the guy for now. Do you want Yamato losing a junior title match on a New Japan show? Yes. I think that we're talking about a reality where the exposure is so different that it's worth it. I think that is not the front runner. I do think that's a likely possibility. Yeah, I... The, the, that is the possibility that I think would be, if you're looking at it from a Dragon Gate perspective, the best case scenario. Other scenario, Hiromu just beats Yamato. Time bomb, one, two, three. Does it hurt Yamato? Do we think less of him? Do we think less of Dragon Gate because of it? No, no. I mean, that's just a reality of the situation. I think going in here without like healthy, I don't even call it skepticism, just reality. Like the reality of the situation is that Hiromu is probably going to do time bomb and pen uh, Yamato in like in 13 minutes. And it's, I would argue, a compliment to Yamato that he can lose and not be affected by it. Oh yeah, no, it's, I, 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 I want to pose this to you, Case, that I've been playing with this idea more so about Hiroshi Tanahashi, but I think it can apply a little bit to Yamato. Okay. So this was in a concert with the Forbidden Door show uh, and the match that he had with MJF. The idea of with... I, I'm thinking of wrestlers and how you build wrestlers more on a systems of debits and credits and that way you, you put a lot of time, effort, wins push into them and you at the end of the day you should be able to you to withdraw you right? you should be able to now use that wrestler to give wins to other people yamato is in the position that hiroshi tanahashi's in where yamato can be solidly beaten i would say probably in any Dreamgate match he's in for the next like four or five years and it doesn't change his opinion of in my mind he, he he's done you, you've built him up enough now it's time for you to to use him to get over get over other people yeah i that is exactly what they've done i even though i don't always love yamato in the main event i think they've done a brilliant job 
of getting him to that position. You know, he obviously lost against Yoshioka in a Dreamgate match last year. That was a huge deal when that happened. He lost to Yoshioka in King of Gate last year. That was a huge deal when that happened. He lost to Kai, Final Gate 2021 for the Dreamgate. That was a huge deal when that happened. Before that, you know, look at look at all these losses that Yamato's had in singles matches. Before that, it was Coach Minoru in the semifinals of King Gate. That was a huge deal when it happened. Before that, I'm trying to scroll and find the last. It was it was Ata King of Gate 2020 semifinals. That was a big deal when it happened because it led to Ata winning the Dreamgate belt. Ben K beats Yamato Dangerous Gate 2019. That was a big deal when it happened. It was Ben's first key. It was a good first to against Yamato set him off on the right foot in that Dreamgate run. When Yamato loses, it means something. It doesn't mean that Yamato is, is lesser than, worse off than he was going into the match. It means that his opponent gains something. Does Hiromu need to gain something? No, he does not. We're kind of at an even Steven scenario here where if Yamato wins, great, because they got to do a rematch and it's going to be on a New Japan show. That's cool as shit. If Yamato loses, it'll be okay. I, I think Dragon Gate will keep on keeping on. Yeah, like... Yamato losing to Hiromu does not mean that Yamato is not going to go for his sixth open the Dreamgate title in some future. That's probably going to happen. Like, he's at his spot where he's Teflon. Yes, yeah. L- looking at these, at the history of Yamato singles matches, they, they've they really done a remarkable job. I mean, I can remember all of these losses that he's had. Oh, yeah. And and I, I, I can't say the same... You know, if I were to go to any other wrestler's cage match page and look through their singles matches, I, d- I don't know if I'd be able to say that. But with Yamato, I mean, I'm back I'm back in 2015 when T-Hawk beat him in King of Gate. And I'm like, yep, I remember that. Before that, it was Hulk at World. Yep, I, you know, this is a, a credit to Dragon Gate here. Really, really, I, I, I don't need to pat themselves. I, I don't need to pat them on the back for booking Yamato. But boy, have they booked Yamato well. <laughs> and now you're getting basically into a decade of history of protection. Yes. You know. Yeah, and it shows, you know, because now you can do a cool match like this that feels hot. If you are parachuting into this show and you're going, hey, Yamato versus Hiromu, cool dream match, match just to happen, I would encourage you go back, listen to the J podcast. We explain uh, the storyline behind this match, which has been brewing for months online and then at the All Star Junior Festival, and they pay it off here. It's good stuff.